Hey sketchy friends, Taria from urbansketchingworld.com here. Today I want to show you how you can make a watercolour mixing chart and I shall be demonstrating it by using the Daniel Smith Essentials set. So stick around until the end of the video though as I want to show you another exercise you can use in order to understand how your colours mix together and what you can produce. So I think this is an excellent set to start with if you're just stepping up to artist quality paint or if maybe you want to try out some Daniel Smith paints for the first time or perhaps if you want to learn more about colour theory and mixing with a split primary system. So these are the colours that we're going to be using or that are available in the set. Uh, there are two yellows, two reds and two blues and what I mean about split primaries is that each primary colour in this set has a warm version and a cool version. And as I swatch them here I think you can intuitively see that the warm colours do actually look warmer and the cool colours look cooler so this is a helpful way for you to remember which are which and to visually see why, why some are labelled as warm and some are labelled as cool. Working with a split primary system, you'll find that one set of yellow and blue makes a nice bright green, while another set of yellow and blue makes a duller or earthier green. The same is true with the purples and oranges too. So once the chart is done, we'll take a look at which of those combinations produce a bright secondary or a duller secondary colour. Remember, duller, for the lack of a better term, doesn't mean worse. Actually, in urban sketching, those duller or earthier colours are much more useful. So I've drawn out a 7x7 grid on my watercolour paper. I have six colours, but I wanted an extra square to write in the name of the colour. And I've listed in them in the same order across the top of the grid as down the side. My squares are 2 centimetres by 2 centimetres. So the entire grid is 14 centimetres by 14 centimetres. But feel free to use any size square you want that will fit on your page nicely. I've started by putting in the original colour straight from the tube of paint where the colour labels match each other. You'll find this means you'll fill in the diagonal across the chart with the original colours. I like to get this done first so that I can just see the original colour and it kind of helps having a frame of reference to see your mixes against but also sometimes I have a lapse of concentration and I fill in the wrong square by accident so I just like to get these, these first six kind of nailed down. To fill in the rest of the chart we're going to start with the first column, in this instance Hansa Yellow Light. The colour at the head of the column will be the predominant colour in the mixture. So I just add a tiny bit of New Gamboge, which is the colour labelled on the left, to the Hansa Yellow Light and then I paint the square in like I am doing here. Then, because I already have Hansa Yellow Light with a bit of New Gamboge on my palette, I can add even more New Gamboge in so I can then fill in this square here where New Gamboge is at the head of the column and Hansa Yellow is on the left. So it means there's more New Gamboge, less Hansa Yellow light. So to me, it makes logical sense to carry on and fill in the chart in this way. So here I've got more Hansa Yellow light with a tiny bit of Pyrrol Scarlet. And then I'm going to go back to my mixture, add a bit more Pyrrol Scarlet. And then Pyrrol Scarlet becomes the predominant colour in that mixture and Hansa Yellow Light is the weaker colour in the mixture. So then I will go in and fill in this top square in that way. So you can see on my page I've actually made a note, I've put an arrow and I've said more of this above the labels on the, the columns. So it just helps me remember that that's the colour that there's more of in the mixture. It also helps to know this or remember this when you come back to your chart and you're use, using it as reference and you know the mixture was more of the colour at the top and less of the colour on the left. So I'm just going to carry on and fill in the chart in this way. Even though it's just six colours, it's still going to take you a little while, so maybe an hour or so, um, maybe two. If you are interested in seeing me create a bigger chart than this, um, then I do have another video which I think is titled How to Make a Watercolour Mixing Chart. So do go check it out. It is 
quite a bit older so the quality is maybe not as good as what I've managed to achieve thus far um, so yeah please do bear that in mind I am sorry about that um, but yeah you get the idea there and you'll see me creating a massive chart from well I think it's massive um, from my white knights watercolor set which is 14 colors so yeah 14 colors across the top and 14 colors down the side so yeah it's a big chart it took me like four maybe five hours I guess I was filming it, so there was like an extra element of making sure everything was uh, being filmed correctly. But yeah, it was it was a day. It was a full day making that chart. Um, so just be prepared if you are going to swatch out or, sorry, make a chart for that many colours. It will take you a while. I would recommend not bothering doing this if you've got a set of like 24 colours or 36 colours because, I don't know, the chances are you've got most of the colors you want like in the actual pan already or maybe just pick out some of the colors from your set to do I just feel it gets a bit unwieldy after that point but this is a great exercise if you've got a more select amount of colors so you know six eight ten twelve fourteen colors and then you can really understand what your watercolor set can do for you you can understand you know which colors make which colors and if this is guys this is hands down the most useful exercise i have ever done especially the bigger chart with my white knight set which is my at the moment my go to set that's the one i use and now i feel like i know it i feel like i've got to know it and i know what it can do and i know when i go out if i mix this color with this color then i'll get that color which is the color that i want you know you can also take a take a picture of your mixing chart on your phone. That way you can carry it around with you or you can always have access to it if you do need to quickly refer to it. Or maybe you can, uh, if you have a bigger sketchbook, then maybe you'll be able to fit it in there. But the thing that I'm going to show, the exercise I'm going to show at the end of the video is going to be something you can have in your sketchbook and you can always refer to that as well. So... Yeah, one way or another, you've always got something to refer to. But over time, you're just going to get to know exactly what your colours can do. And you won't even have to refer to your chart. So I highly, highly, highly recommend doing something like this. It was just going to take your colour mixing knowledge to the next level. So this square I'm doing here is New Gamboge, mainly with a touch of Thalo Blue. And then I'm going to go back to my palette and add more phthalo blue to the mixture and then fill in the corresponding square in the phthalo blue column. So here's phthalo blue and on the left is new gamboge. This is actually a very therapeutic exercise as well. So if you just need to like chill out or you need something to take your mind off things for <laughs> a couple of hours and you want something to do, then this is perfect exercise to do. So now I'm filling in the Pyrrhal Scarlet com column with Pyrrhal Scarlet and a touch of Quinadricone Rose. So another tip um, here is to try your best to get the water to paint ratio to be the same for each color mixture. And this can be easier said than done uh, sometimes and I don't think I quite nailed it here on this chart either. I can see a few that are a little paler than they should be probably because there's just too much water in the mixture so it is a bit tricky so don't beat yourself up um, but it's just something to be aware of basically to try and get reasonably similar water to paint ratio for each of the squares the other thing you might run into is that if you paint a square next to one that's slightly damp and the edges touch then they're going to run into each other i also have charts where this has happened Again, if it's just a tiny little bit, it's not a massive problem, but yeah, try your best to not touch squares. And if that means you end up with little white gaps between squares, then that's fine. That's no problem. They do not need to touch each other. If you wanted to, you could even draw in a little bit of a margin between each square, but I, I didn't do that in this case, but you can do. So here I'm filling in the Pyrrhal Scarlet column with mainly Pyrrhal Scarlet and a touch of Thalo Blue. And then I go to the Thalo Blue column, where I've got mainly Thalo Blue with just a touch of Pyrrhal Scarlet. 
you can if you want to you can work down each column rather than doing it the way I'm showing you the way I'm showing you seems the most logical and efficient way to do it to me but if you prefer to just start with one column let's say Hansa yellow light and you just want to add a bit of new gamboge paint that in then create a new mixture Hansa yellow light with just a touch of pyrrole scarlet paint that in Start a new mixture, Hansa Yellow Light, with just a touch of Quinagicone Rose, etc, etc. You can do that if you want to. I just find that this way is a bit more time efficient, but then you do really have to work a little bit harder on the water to paint ratio, the way that I'm doing it, I think. So like that square that I just painted in, I feel is probably just a tiny bit too watery. But it's okay, you know, I know in my head I'm like, okay, well, it's a bit watery, so, you know, if I used a bit more paint in that mixture it'll just give me a bit more of a intense version of what I just painted in that square you know this chart is you know for your reference it's for your learning so if you mess it up it doesn't matter if you you know it's a every time you do one of these you learn something new and I'll be honest with you guys I've made about five of these before getting the right getting it right on camera the way I wanted to present it to you guys I cannot even tell you the things that went wrong. Things were out of focus, my colours bled into each other too much. Um, one of them just was so, the colours were so watery. I was like, what is going on? I don't know. This week has just been, <laughs> it's just been one of those weeks where it's just like, ah, nothing is working. I think it's because I've just returned from a three week honeymoon and we've just like had such a crazy adventurous trip and now I'm sitting down at a desk trying to <laughs> film videos and be quiet and do art I'm just like god I'm just I don't know my brain's not in the game yet so here we are I'm just painting in the final square um which I'm looking at this I really like that shade I'm thinking like oh nice sky color and this is what you're gonna this is what's gonna happen when you do your mixing chart you're going to see oh those unexpectedly those colors mix together to make this really nice color that I want to use you know so let's look at what colors are better for making what colors <laughs> so you can see our warm red and our warm yellow pyrrole scarlet and new gamboge make really nice bright oranges and let's look at french ultramarine and new gamboge they're both warm and they make mm, a bit of a duller or more olivey kind of, let's say more olivey kind of green. Whereas if I take the um, cold yellow and cold blue, so Hansa yellow light and thalo blue, if we look at that green, it's actually quite vibrant. It's a very bright green. And then if we look at the warm red and the warm blue, so warm red and warm blue. Mm. I might not have quite got that mixture quite right, but it makes a bit more of a duller purple. And then if we look at the cold red and the cold blue, then we can see it actually makes quite a nice vibrant set of purples. Now the reason for this and the reason for the split primary system is that some shades of red and some shades of blue make a nicer or more vibrant purple. Some shades of red uh, mixed with some shades of yellow make a more vibrant orange, etc, etc. So, a red and a yellow, like the warm red and yellow here, Pilot, Pyrrole Scarlet and New Gamboge, are, they lean more towards orange on the colour wheel. Therefore, together, they make a nice, vibrant, pure-looking orange. Likewise, if we take a cold red and a cold blue, they both lean towards more towards purple on the color wheel. Therefore, they make a much more vibrant kind of purple. But it's good to know which, which colors make the, the kind of more earthier tones, because as I said before, those kinds of colors are going to be much more useful to you in the pursuit of urban sketching because they're just much more commonly found in the real world. So I hope that's been um, useful for you guys to see and I hope that very brief <laughs> overview of the split primary system and also making a watercolour mixing chart was 
useful. So now I just want to show you quickly something that I've got in the back of one of my sketchbooks, which you can do also in the back of your sketchbook. So let me just show you that quickly. So this is my uh, Stillman and Burn Zeta series sketchbook from May 2018 to Jan 2019. But what I've got in the back here is some color experimentations with this same set of paints. So as you can see over here, I've got the Pyro Scarlet, New Gamboge and French Ultramarine. So those are the warm colors. And then what I do is I took the Pyro Scarlet and I added New Gamboge to it, kept adding, kept adding, kept adding until I got back to New Gamboge. Then I took New Gamboge and I added the French Ultramarine to it, more and more and more and more. Didn't always quite get it even or right, but this is just a great exercise to do in the back of your sketchbook. So I did it until I roughly got back to French Ultramarine. And then I did the same with the Pyral Scarlet with the, and I mixed that into the French Ultramarine. Now I definitely don't think I got this, I think I added too much Pyral Scarlet too soon, but this is the kind of exercise you can just keep doing and keep doing, you know? And it makes a great reference chart in the back of your book. So again, I've got the Quin Rose, the Hansa Yellow Light and the Thalo Blue. So these are the cold colors. So I took Quin Rose and I added Hansa Yellow Light until I got back to the, to the Hansa Yellow Light. And then I took Hansa Yellow Light and I added Thalo Blue. Look at these greens, amazing. Again, because it's a cold yellow and a cold blue, they lean towards green on the on the wheel and they make these beautiful greens. And then I took phthalo blue and I added quin rose to it. And look at the purples that it makes. Beautiful. So, you know, and then I was just messing around here, that kind of thing. So it's just great to have that kind of reference in the back of your book. Here I was messing around with greens and then here was pyrrole scarlet and sap green. So until you do something like this, you really uh, just can't understand the full potential of the colors that you have. So I really, really recommend doing something like this in the back of your sketchbook. It's a bit less structured than the watercolor mixing chart, but you've still got a bit of a reference as to what some of these colors can do. Obviously, I've kept the warms with the warms and the colds with the colds, but I could have carried on and then mixed the warms and the colds together just to see what happened there. So yeah, have a go at this as well, and then you'll have that in the back of your sketchbook as a handy reference. So I hope this has been an interesting video for you guys, and please subscribe if you enjoyed it, and check out urbansketchingworld.com because there's loads of posts over there about all things urban sketching, and yeah, <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video.